Hello and welcome to Men at the Movies, the YouTube channel. My name is Paul McDonald and joining me up there on the other side of the screen is Sarah. Sarah, thanks for joining me on this YouTube edition of Men at the Movies podcast. Thank you for having me and glad to be back again. Always a good time. So normally when we're doing the when we're when I'm pulling for the YouTube channel, uh, I pull stuff from the recording. Typically, it's stuff I try not to air on the podcast, so it's a, so it's extra, it's additional. And so, what we're going to do today, because we're talking about ET, and ET is a movie. Britt and I are going to record. Hopefully, everything working out well. We're going to record it live, face to face. And I haven't figured out how to record all that yet. <laughs> so Sarah was uh, begging pleading desperate to talk about et <laughs> so i was like look sarah we can do the youtube version we can we can kind of do a little condensed thing to do you know hopefully five to ten minutes where we talk about et what it means and she can give her big synopsis so the big question sarah is when when i talked about et and told you i was doing it with brit and you you i think you threatened to come down to charlotte and with a knife maybe <laughs> <laughs> maybe not that bad i don't think i was quite that vehement i may have you know promised you like you know a firstborn child somewhere in there or something. right something something yeah. something you know <laughs> negligible uh, but so when i brought up recording about et what is it that you love about it why did you want so desperately to share and to talk about this movie yeah well <laughs> I mean, I'll start off with the, you know, original reason was uh, because I grew up with this movie. Uh, so it has really heavy duty, you know, hardcore nostalgia factor for me. Uh, not by choice, <laughs> because <laughs> I was force fed this movie growing up. And when it first came out in 1982, my brother fell in love with it and would not let it go and i think because of that we went to see it at least three times in the theaters probably more than that and then it was the first vhs tape that we bought when that came out so it was the very first one we bought of any kind um you know he had everything he had an et doll and he had an et record that was read by michael jackson and he had probably et pajamas and everything and so probably yeah, yeah. so the stuffed animal all the things all of it you know and stuff and so i grew up watching this movie constantly <laughs> and i hated it for a right really, i was about to say that's normally something that you're like this is why i hate this movie i hated it for a really long time not to mention like we were like we were talking about before it's kind of a dark movie and when this came out i was seven so it's kind of scary because there's like you know like like kids there's divorce and there's kids crying and getting scared and aliens dying and bad men invading right. your house and it like that was a lot you know for a kid and so i don't think i could watch this like properly as like a movie on its own like away from my brother's obsession with it until i was like in college or something and then i was starting to just be like a big spielberg fan as a whole you know and so this was in his stable and stuff like that so it's it's an extremely well-made movie and and um you know I, I i do i do love the nostalgic part of it it's such a great like time capsule of 80s you know it's just like oh, the yeah. outfits and the the house and the way everything's laid out and all these pop culture references and the fact that the mom just goes and like leaves her kids alone all day and they're like hiding an alien in her house that she has no idea about oh yeah <laughs> well we spent some time talking that this is very has a lot of overlaps and parallels with stranger things which also the mom goes off. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have an ET. She doesn't have a somehow doesn't have an ET T-shirt, but book. she's got the stranger. It does have the book. Yeah. <laughs> Where it's funny, ET as you mentioned, uh, ET has hots for the mom. Yes. So weird. <laughs> so this is a weird little novelization, man. It, it's yeah. <laughs> ET is like crushing on the mom, and it, it's it's very weird. And it's told from the well, I think, uh, point of view and like the mom's point of view. It's it's out there. <laughs> it's not quite as it's not. It doesn't resonate as well as some of the other novelizations. Is that nah, what you're saying? No, it's nothing like the last Starfighter. No, last Starfighter was better. 
<laughs> Terminator was better. Both of them. <laughs> the novelizations or the movie. Oh, well, I mean, Terminator is one of my top three. So I'm going right. to Right. Yeah. Like, more of the big question was E.T. or Last Starfighter. Oh, um, I think E.T. is the better made movie. Last Starfighter is more of a fun movie, but E.T. I think is definitely better made. Than- yeah, you, do, you don't have the feels that you do for, for E.T. Yeah. You're not, you know, it doesn't get a little dusty when <laughs> at any point in Starfighter yes. where you've got a couple of those in E.T. Yeah. Just a couple. So what was your favorite scene from the movie? <laughs> well, my favorite scene is at the very end when my his Elliot's older brother Mike gets his three Dungeons and Dragons friends to come and help them, you know, help E.T. escape and get back to his his spaceship. And I just think that that is so speaking ending, of stranger things parallels right you know it's i mean it's just it's so fun and i love his his friends are just so like oh we're helping to rescue an alien sure let's do it you know like they're like yeah. been living out their fantasies through this dungeons and dragons game you know and and they're living this really quiet suburb where nothing dangerous or unusual ever happens and stuff and then all of a sudden they got their friend mike like stealing a medical van with an alien in the back seat being like hey <laughs> grab our bikes meet us at the playground you know and they don't ask questions they're like oh sure man when well, we're there you know and stuff and so then they go there and they're even really not that put off by the fact that there's an alien in the back seat they're just kind of like huh Okay. Kenny, he's a man from outer space, and we're taking him to a spaceship. Well, can he just beam up? This is reality, Fred. You know, and stuff, and then they literally fight against government agents with guns. In the original version, they changed it, but they're fighting against government agents with guns, and they're willing, in the novelization, that was one point where they're like, they're willing to plow these guys down and go to jail if it helps E.T. escape. But then E.T. Yeah. flicks his finger and they all fly off. And I just love their expressions, and it's just, it's super fun. It's one of the funnest parts of the movie, and I really enjoy the end. And in, when you talk about the the imagination and the wonder, and especially back in the early '80s, this was all super new stuff. Yeah. Uh, and it was, I mean, that's what even makes it because it does look so good. Compare, I mean, you can compare it to nowadays. You can look more, make it look more realistic. But it just for what they had last, yeah. or from what they had back then, it's pretty incredible. And it's, it's, it's such a simple effect too, because I mean, like if you think now they could have had them like you know beam to the ship in like this big explosion of light or they could have had them like dematerialize and you know rematerialize there or something no they just cause the bikes to fly and how cool is that yeah. you know it's just so cool yeah. that's Make that's one simple. of those things like when you're a kid and you're on your bike and you're really pumping it and you're going down a hill and you're flying you're like this could really happen i could really do this my bike could just take off you know <laughs> so, i don't know at least i thought that way maybe i was the only one i don't know <laughs> yeah, who didn't try to take off and fly across yeah. the moon like E.T. and England yeah, yeah, Entertainment? <laughs> <laughs> so you laughed when I asked you about your favorite scene because while that sort of, like you said, it, 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 it's inspiring, it makes your heart sore and all this other stuff. Um, I pushed back a little. It's like, OK, OK, because some of the stuff I was like, all right, like. You say, this is why it would connect to young boys and connect to these. Like, I don't care about them. I care about you. Why does it connect with you? And you start digging around and you actually landed on what was your least favorite scene that you're like, oh, this was this one actually resonated and connected with me a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My least favorite scene. And I, it was funny. I, I got really frustrated, you know, like when you asked me to take another look at it, <laughs> uh, because I was just like, but I like <laughs> that scene. Can't we just go with that? Scene? Oh, so, so I went and I prayed and I asked God to, you know, like, you know, bring more stuff to light, you know, and um, he 
led me to go and take another look at my least favorite scene, which is when E.T. and Elliot are laid out and surrounded by doctors and E.T. is dying. And I remember hating that scene when I was growing up. When this movie came out, I was seven, you know, and my brother was five. And I remember hating that scene because it was so sad. And it, it just like yeah. when you're a kid and you're like laying there next to your best friend and he's dying, that's like shredding, you know, like to your heart. And um, and there was already a bunch of stuff in that movie that was that was hard for little kids to deal with things like divorce. You know, my parents divorced when I was five and my brother was three. And I think that's part of the reason why my brother was able to connect with this movie so strongly is Elliot in the movie has a father who doesn't live with them. You know, he's off in Mexico with Sally and, you know, and, and our dad was, you know, down in Texas. And um, yeah, I think it was one of a myriad of reasons he was able to connect with Elliot in the movie. And, um, but one of the things that God really showed me about this movie as a whole and that scene, you know, especially was that it's it's OK to feel sad when sad things happen and it's OK to feel angry when, you know, things hurt you. And it's OK to be afraid of things because there's scary stuff out there. And I think that I mean, I'm sure there must have been other movies like before this one that explored those themes. But I feel like this movie was just one big you know, like Hallmark card, if you will, of just being like, it's okay to feel what you're feeling. And I don't think that that was spoken to kids a lot, you know, like at that point, not that I can remember anyway. Their feelings didn't yeah, matter you back just, then. Like, you had to kind of like, I mean, it was Gen X, you know, it was like, like the mom was leaving her kids alone yeah. all day. You know, everybody was a latchkey kid and we had to make our own lunches and let ourselves in after school. And you had to kind of, you know, be a big girl, be a big boy, take care of your younger brother and sister and, you know, and stuff. And so there wasn't a whole lot of um, like hyper attention paid to feelings, you know, and, and, you know, mental health, even if you will, you know, like you didn't see any of those kids getting, mm. you know, counseling or going to a therapist because their parents got divorced. You know, it's like that didn't happen right. at, that back then, at least not as much as it does now. Um, but I think that this movie was kind of, you know, like a, like a love letter speaking to all those kids struggling with things, you know, just being like, Hey, it's okay that you, that you feel that way. That's a normal thing to feel. And that is okay. And, you know, just go ahead and feel it and let those feelings out and, you know, it'll, it'll help, you know, it'll help you grow. It'll help you heal and stuff. And, so um so that's what I was was thinking about it was that that scene is just one big validation of of when we have big scary feelings that it's okay to have big scary feelings because we have a we have a big god who created with created us with emotions and as outlets yeah. to to deal with things that happen in life so so yeah and one of the things as we're going through our blockbuster series and looking at aliens is this idea of aliens as a sign mm. of the supernatural. And so it's interesting as, as he's dealing with, you know, Elliot's dealing with this stuff. Here comes this supernatural being to help him through it, yeah. to bring him hope, to heal his heart, you know, and, and, and I think God will do that same thing for us as we're dealing with the stuff yeah. of this world. So thanks for making me feel all the feelings, so there, Paul. <laughs> all the feels. Well, thanks for, for coming on and for harassing me about E.T. And uh, no, it, and it actually worked out well because, like I said, I didn't have a way to, to put a YouTube content up for the movie. So now go. we do. Uh, so if you guys want to listen to the conversation with me and Britt, that'll be on our, our podcast and men at the movies dot com backslash podcast or um or spotify or apple pods or really anywhere you get your podcasts so sarah thanks again for joining us thank you and we'll see you next time and we hope to see you next time on the men at the movies Woo youtube channel <laughs>